This is similar to the screen that you're going to see when you first create a board. Now what I do have here is I have my workflow of how I tend to interact with my leads that I've set up um, that fits my particular business. You can, you can add and delete these lists as you see fit. When you start a new board, you will only have one of these cards or one of these lists, and then you'll have another add a list button like this one over here to customize it for your needs. Let's go over a little bit about how I use this for my workflow. So I have one first uh, list here, which I call leads, and on every one of my boards that I make, my first uh, list is always the same. It always have templates of cards that I'm going to be using in the board, and it has a key for how I color code those cards. Um, that is just for reference and ease of use. I found it a lot easier to have templates for cards because I have a lot of pre-formatted information on them where I can just copy and paste and use an existing card so I don't have to fill in all that information every single time I make a card. I have a lead queue. My lead queue does not include my entire database of names that I'm cultivating for real estate. So traditional real estate wisdom will tell you you need between 500 and 1,000 contacts in your database to have a sustainable real estate business. And that's just too many names to have to track all the time. So what I do is my lead queue is a representation of the people I interact with that have expressed interest in doing a transaction within the next 12 months. So I put them in this list so I can kind of know what's coming down my pipeline over the next year. I have a 30-day lead queue. I do this because there are certain activities that I have created that I do before a person gets ready to start the process, and I like to keep track of that. I have a list for active buyer. I have a list for active sellers. I have a list for closed and funded throughout the year, and then I have a list of people, maybe leads that I've lost the deal on. I just like to keep track of that at the end of the year. I will delete all of these cards that are in here or move them back to the queue if they're going to do a transaction soon or archive them, but it gives me a quick and dirty look at what I did over the previous year. Now, to transfer a card from one to another, all you do in, is drag and drop through the process as they move through this pipeline, right? So that's the workflow that I have set up that works best for me. Let's talk about these labels for a little bit. Now Trello makes consistent updates and improvements to their system all the time. And one of them that they've made recently is when you click on this, it actually shows you what the label is. It used to not be that way, which made the key all that much more important. And now that they have this feature, I don't really need that key any longer, and I probably will delete it from a lot of my boards. So in Trello speak, this is a list, and this is a card in a list, which basically I like to think of as a post-it note. This is the front of the post-it note, and when you click it, this is what is considered on the back of the post-it note. So I have a lot of information here, right? I've got the the lead's name, what kind of transaction they're planning on doing. I have a label as how good of a lead I think they are. I also have a due date. This due date is the next time that I need to interact with this particular lead. I have a little bit of information about them, their basic contact information, uh, vital information about the transaction that they're looking to do. I also have some secondary contact information. I like to track who referred them. And then I have a notes. I have a notes section about it. I also can make comments here. Every time I interact with them, I make a comment. And we'll talk about that in a little minute in a in a minute when I talk about these due dates. So on the right, you'll notice you have a menu item here. So on the members, you can actually invite somebody to join this particular card. A good use case for that would be, let's say another realtor recommended this lead to me and uh, they couldn't work it themselves for whatever reason and they recommend it to me. Well, I like to always keep them up to date on what's happening with that particular lead so that they know that I'm handling their lead with care. 
And so I could actually invite them to join this board and then they could hit this subscribe button when they get the invite and they would get automatic updates every time I update this card. So I would put a comment here, hey, Vincent will be in town on the 18th to start his search and they'll kind of know what's going on. Now you have to be a little careful because you don't want to give away any private information financial information, that kind of stuff, but it is a good way to where I don't have to send another email and another text message to some other party. It's done for me. There's also a labels tab here. This is where you go in to set up all those colored labels, and the labels do interact with the entire board. Um, you can create a checklist. One of the checklists I would like to make for my leads is all the activities leading up to the transaction that they have to do, which I was talking about with the 30 days out. I need to make a checklist for that, and I will probably do that in the next few days. Here is where you set a due date. The due date is really interesting because what you can't do with a due date is you can't have multiple dates per card. You can only have one date per card. So it's not like you can use this as a marketing database for a particular person. You can't have multiple dates to follow up with them. But what you can do is have a rolling list of all the interactions you need to do with people. And I'll show you how I do that. Attachments are really interesting. Um, I don't use them too much because Trello does have a cap on how much data you can use. And attachments in real estate tend to be very large. We deal with transactions. We're very paper intensive. I try not to use Trello to, to track some of that stuff. Um, I just don't find it necessary. Other people might. Um, so there are some interesting add-ons you can attach to Trello where it'll let you attach things from Dropbox or OneDrive or Google Drive or, you know, whatever you want to use. So that could be something interesting to explore. Uh, there's actions that you can use for this card. The subscribe one, which is the interesting one I was talking about with members, if they subscribe to the board, they get alerts on everything going on. So that kind of talks about the lead card. And uh, we already went over the labels. So now let's go on to talk about some of the cool little features you can do with this board. So I talked about having this next interaction with this client on October 18th. And if you can imagine, you would have... 20 or 30 cards here on people that you think are going to be doing business within the next 12 months and they have different stages that they're in. So if you click on this calendar here and I'll show you how to get this calendar button here in a minute because it's considered a power up in uh, Trello speak but you would have all your interactions here. So if you notice on the 18th of next month Vincent Vega has an activity that I need to take care of. If I click on this card, I can quickly reference why I'm doing this activity because I've made a comment down in the comment section that says he's going to be in town to start his search, so I know. Now, if he came into town and we didn't find anything and he was going to come back another a month from now, then I would put another comment that says, he will be back in town on September or uh, December 15th, and I would go up here and change the due date to that next date. That helps me keep track of all the activities I have to do with the leads that are in the queue. So let, let me show you how I get, and you can do a month view and a week view, however you want to do it. Let me show you how I got the calendar in the first place. If you click this, these are all the options you can do for an entire board. So you click on the menu. Here's the team members. I'm a team member on my own. I don't work in a team, so it's just me. But I do have other non-team members added to this board because I like to share my templates that I've created so that other people that want to learn this system don't have to do that. And these are people that are in my office. You can change the background color of the board. I do use some of that in my buyer and seller transactions. You can filter cards. You can add stickers to them. But the most interesting one that I like is this power-up section. So if you click on power-ups, these are other services that you can integrate into Trello, which is really interesting. So if you scroll down here, here's a calendar. And because I have it enabled, there's a little uh, settings feed. 
Now, I have this enabled as an iCalendar. Why would I do that? Well, now, if I enable that as an iCalendar, if I go back to the calendar, this I can now add to my cell phone outside of the actual Trello app. So, I can view it on my calendar of everything I need to do today is now updated with this included, which I find to be extremely nice. So if we go back from the power-ups, one other feature I want to definitely show you is, let's get out of the calendar and these cards. So there's two ways to create these cards. The first way is, like I said, you can click here and you can copy the card and create a new card. But sometimes I don't like to do that because that can be a little time intensive. I'll do it if I happen to be in the Trello interface. But I find it to be a lot easier to use another setting, which they call email to board settings. What this allows you to do is send an email that directly sets up a card. So let's go through that. And I'm not going to share that right now because when I click on this, it actually shows you the email address I use and I don't want to broadcast that. But let me go through really quickly how I do that. So let's open my mail account. And what I've done is I've copied that email address that they give you, and I've set up a contact in my system for the sales pipeline template. The subject is going to be the title of the card. So Marcellus Wallace is a new contact that I've just interacted with. Wallace. And I talked to him and I think he's a hot lead. He is going to start looking immediately. So you can put hashtag hot and that will automatically add the label to it, right? Which is great. Now the body of the email becomes the description of the card. So what I've done is I've set up a signature for a sales lead that automatically populates how that's formatted so I don't have to do anything. It makes it easy. So I, I now enter their email address, their phone number, and all the vital stats into this email. Bam. It's sent off. Okay? Let's go back to the board. There's my card. It's labeled with the hot lead. It's got their name. And if you open it, it would have all your information here ready to go. Now, one downfall about this system is if you do it this way, it will not add a checklist. However, if you add a checklist to your template card, when you click on the new card and hit checklist, instead of just add, there'll be another box here that says you can add it from another card. So you could have a pre-formatted checklist on here that you could simply add. It would have all the items and it would add the checklist. That's a very good setting to have because it cuts down, again, on the amount of work you have to do. That is an overview of how I use Trello to manage my sales pipeline in the real estate industry.